Robinson and I'm an aero modeler and an engineer. Join me on a fascinating journey where I show you some of the techniques used in scale aero modeling. Hello modelers and we're back in the workshop. Today we're going to do something really exciting. Well I think it's really exciting. It's something I've never done before so who knows what will happen. Um, a great modeler Dirk Tink from Holland has outlined how to do this on the Model Flying Forum. He's building a rather gorgeous Fuga. And uh, he did this and he showed some brief photographs. So I haven't really got a handle on exactly how he did it or exactly what materials he used, but I think from his emails, I've got it right. So the basic problem is, this is an aluminium tube, weighs a ton, and a phenolic. Phenolic is kind of like Oh God, how can you describe it? It's like a ceramic cardboard. It's really strange. But anyway, so that's a phenolic tube. And it's, you tend to buy them as a, as a matched set, uh, as wing tubes. And this was bought a few years ago for this chipmunk and is the right size inner. But unfortunately, I'll slide that off because it's heavy. The outer is too thick to fit into the ribs and it's close but what I'm going to do to the ribs if you remember from the from I think it was from the first video if you remember I'm actually going to to move the position of the hole down a little bit and on this rib it doesn't matter it stays where it is but on W2, 3 and 4 it goes down progressively more and more. And when it hits the last rib, which is either W4 or W5, it's right against the skin. So if I open this up to take the phenolic tube, I'll be outside of the skin of the, skin of the wing. So that's not good. And besides that, I really don't like the weight that these, the phenolic tube and the aluminium tube are providing. So what we're gonna do instead, what I managed to get oops, was a really nice, lovely and lightweight, one mil thick, 32 millimeter carbon tube. And it is stiff, it's lovely, it's really nice. And, and that's, that's gonna be the wing tube. But the problem is we haven't got a sleeve for it. Now on a lot of ARTFs and other models, the sleeve is made of all sorts of things. It can even be cardboard, believe it or not. I don't think that the sleeve imparts very much strength. It just stops this from slopping around in the, in the ribs and gives a little bit of support, I guess, but um, I don't think it does a lot. So the sleeve on the outside really is to locate this securely. So I've seen tubes made of cardboard, of plastic, of glass fiber, things like that. Uh, I've even seen another carbon tube, which is even, even nicer, but you're spending a lot of money to get a carbon and carbon wing joiner tube with a matched sleeve on the outside. You really are. So what are we going to do? Dirk outlined a procedure where you wrap, and this is cellophane, the sort of cellophane that you get from a florist for, for wrapping flowers and stuff like that. And what Dirk suggested was that you wrap the carbon tube in cellophane and then you lay over the top a very specific sort of glass fiber. And let me show you some. You can actually get glass fiber in a sort of a tube or a sock. And there's the end of it. Yeah. And what you do basically is you put the cellophane on the on the bit you want, you put some release agent on this tube just in case. Then you wrap it in cellophane, and I'm not sure how we attach the cellophane yet. I'm thinking about that. Then you slide this tube over the cellophane, being very careful not to snag it. This is a 50 gram uh, cloth. If you pull it tight, it's nice and snug to the tube. And then we secure each end with tape to stop it wriggling around too much, masking tape. And then we make a tube by simply applying glass resin to this section here. We don't go over the ends, but we make sure that the section that we do 
resin is big enough to cover the part we want to make. So I've allowed a couple of inches either end, well maybe an inch, so the width of the fuselage is from here to here. So as long as that's resin we're, we're good to go. And once it's set you should be able to grab it and just because of the cellophane just slide it straight off. Then once it's off there you should be able to peel the cellophane from inside just from one end. That's the theory. Now when I was looking at for this cloth I got several weights because the diameter doesn't always work because obviously it, it gets bigger if you're putting it on a bigger tube. So this was 50 millimeter cloth. The tube is 32 so obviously it will expand bigger than that. But what I have found is the I, I, I ordered several sizes and these were only a couple of pounds a meter so it's not very expensive. So what I did find was a a hundred and I think this is a hundred and two gram. Um, the lightweight one is 46 grams per square meter and the heavier one this one is 102 grams per square meter and this is the one I think I'll use I think I want it just a bit heavier I don't know why but I think I do but as you can see it goes on just the same and can be flattened out and stretched and then we'll resin that and um, hopefully it'll slide off and not destroy my tube that's the plan okay all clear on what we're going to do good let's get started
So welcome back models, it's the next day. Our witness pot is solid, so that's good. And this feels not even tacky, nice and dry. All right, the moment of truth, will this come off of this? Use the tape first. What I have noticed, just looking at it, is that some areas have just lifted slightly. Um, there, I can see a bubble underneath the surface. So it, it has lifted. So this, this method may not be perfect. We may have to think a little bit harder about a way of holding it down. I was trying to avoid vacuum bagging, as so I've never done it. And um, and I, I have a vacuum pump, so I could do it. It's just I've never, never done it. Right, with any luck, a twist and this will come off. Oh God, it doesn't even need a twist. Bit tight at the end. Straight off. Well, that's that's a relief. Now the next problem is to get the cellophane out. It's coming away fairly easily, but I'm not sure how easily it's going to come away from the other end. What I probably need to do is find a way of passing this end to the other end and pulling it out that way. Yeah, that's try prodding something down in there. It's coming away from the walls quite easily, but it's... Um, but it is attached, shall we say. Oh, there we go, just catch it. Push it straight through with a stick. Voila. And there we have wing shoe. Now the inside is lovely, I can see slight bubbles there and there's a ridge down there which is where the fold was. Looks lovely and shiny in there, so that's terrific. Just going to take these edges off. Now I'm going to let this set for a little while because I could just feel it flexing under my hand, even though it's been a day. Yeah, I feel it just flexing slightly, so I think what I'll do is I'll trim these ends off, slide the tube back in, and leave it for a bit longer, because it's, it's proved the technique. Now I've got two more of these to make, two shorter ones for the wings. This one for the fuselage is needed straight away, because I, I need to glass this tube into the fuselage before I start sheeting the fuselage and, and blocking my, my own access. Remember what I was saying about try to avoid painting yourself into a corner. Well, that that is definitely a way of doing that. Now, it's fairly light. I'm quite impressed with that. I'll tell you the weight if you want. Remember, this is quarter scale. That's 45 grams. It's pretty good. And the, wing, the wing tube, smashing the place. 1100 grams. That's a quarter of the weight of some of my models. And then the wing tube, look at that. Lovely fit. So, Dirk, you're a star. It works beautifully. Well, if you've enjoyed that, press like and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.